The Los Angeles Auto Show, some years it's kind of a snoozer, but this year there are at least three cars you need to know about, and we're going to be talking about them today with Travis Okulski from Jalopnik and Andrew Del Colley from Popular Mechanics Magazine. But first, we're going to take you right to the floor of the Los Angeles Auto Show, and then we're going to come back and talk about those cars you need to know about, and that's today on After Drive. <laughs> The Jaguar F-Type Coupe is an absolute freaking stunner. It's Heidi Klum, and the rest of the Los Angeles Auto Show is a John C. Riley look-alike contest. Jag design boss Ian Callum obviously uses his eyes and hands, while every other car designer these days seems to be using his tongue and elbows. So this is it. We can go home. Jag F-Type Coupe, which looks amazing, has probably the best profile of any car here in Los Angeles or probably anywhere. And so now the looks are gonna match the sound, right? So it already sounds amazing. It sounds aggressive and crazy. We love the coupe because it's better looking, but it's also lighter, stiffer, and uh, we'll see if it's faster because uh, the arrow's better. But we love it. It's about 40 pounds lighter uh, in the V6 model than the Roadster. So of course the golden rule, is the coupe always looks better and forget about it. I'm done. I'm done. Put a bow on it. I got my Christmas present. And then there's the Porsche Macan. It's named after a three-quarter sized tiger that lives on the Indonesian island of Bali. It looks like a cayenne grown by a bonsai gardener. Porsche purists will probably hate it, but I like it. It's like a big fast hatchback wearing tires like a choke of triceratops. Subaru, please take note of this. Porsche brought a 340 horsepower Macan S and a 400 horsepower Macan Turbo. Of course, they're both turbocharged, but everyone else is in the weeds with their engine model names, so why should Porsche get away unscathed? Whether or not you think this is a good idea, a small SUV, a small performance SUV is a good idea, think of it this way. This is part of a, a support system for a range of sports cars that you do want like the GT3, GT3 RS, the GT2, cup cars, and all that. So whether or not you think the Macan should exist, or whether the Cayenne or even the Panamera should exist, you should know that this is the business, and this is keeping your favorite sports cars, if your favorite sports cars are Porsches, it's actually keeping them alive and getting better, hopefully. So enjoy it. This is the future. So Nissan brought Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world, over here to Los Angeles to launch this thing, the, the Nismo GTR. Okay, so here's the thing. More horsepower, more torque. Uh, it's 480 torque, uh, 600 horsepower. So yes, over 200 miles an hour probably. They don't talk about it, but that's what it is. Um, zero to 60, they're not saying yet, but they're saying around two seconds, right? So that's like group B level, because what? The Porsche 918 is 2.6. So obviously it looks like a GTR, but let's get really super nerdy for a second. And here, if we got the take right, I would have expressed my amazement at the extent of functional aerodynamic minutia at the back of the Nissan GTR Nismo. The flyweight carbon fiber canards and shark's teeth and half inch beading across the rear wing. All for fine tuning the 600 horsepower GTR's airflow at the wicked speeds at which it will inevitably travel. Signs around the Nissan stand says it's gone around the Nürburgring in seven minutes, eight seconds. That's fast, but what do you think the top line should be? Nissan GTR, faster than a Gumpert Apollo. Or Nissan GTR, only a bit slower than a Porsche 918. You decide. Either way, zero to 60 in two point something. Express your amazement here. Holy joke, look at this thing. Obviously, the GTR is the top of the game here in, at the Nissan booth, but look at these Recaros. These, these could be the best seats in any like sub $30,000 car around. Actually, I don't know what the price is on this, but we'll find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jeff. Great journalist, Mike. Well, thank you. No, but they're not saying yet, but we're going to find out. It's going to come out next year. I'm a big fan of the Juke in manual, of course, not the CVT, uh, which feels like you're driving a box of rubber bands. Uh, the, 
Did you, Mismo RS is actually the dark horse of the show. I think everybody's talking about the GTR. This is the one, this is the one to have. If only you could get all wheel drive with the manual instead of only the CVT. Nissan says the packaging just won't work. So Subaru WRX, don't look directly at it. It's a bit of a dog's breakfast, isn't it? Despite the looks, there's no doubt the new WRX will be a better drive than the current one. After all, power is up to 268 horsepower and 258 pounds-feet with an earlier peak and a real live six-speed manual. That's pretty novel. There's also a new torque vectoring system, retuned suspension, and bigger brakes. Like before, the manual version gets a viscous coupling locking center diff for that good old Subaru 50-50 torque split. But if you're game to order the new CVT automatic, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't, you'll get a new front bit that includes planetary gears, an electronic transfer clutch, and a slight rear drive bias of 4555. Is that enough of an enticement to adopt a basket of rubber bands as your transmission of choice? We'll have to drive it and see. That's right, it's After Drive Live today. <laughs> the first live After Drive we've ever done. Um, Travis Okulski from Jalopnik, Andrew Del Colley yeah. from Popular Mechanics. Let's hear it for him. So, Los Angeles Auto Show. <laughs> Are you guys freaked out enough yet? Man. It's a good time, I'm liking it. Okay, yeah. can we all, we guess we can just go home now. That's, that's, that was that's it. Los Angeles Auto Show, you guys were there, I was there, we saw some cars. And so there are at least three, and each of you have uh, three to talk about. That's today on After Drive, uh, slash drive.tv, at drive on Twitter, and Facebook.com slash drive TV. Okay. With a conversation about cars, never. <laughs> okay. All right, Travis, what was your favorite car there? All right, sorry, <laughs> wait a minute. We should just, it, there are th so we picked three. Right. Each. Right. And, and we, I think you Some of them overlap. Though. Some of them overlap. But I mean, that's okay. Yeah. And we also made the rule you can't talk about the F type. Right. Good point because the F-Type is the best one that was there. It just won everything. The Jaguar yeah. F-Type. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Basically sweeps the floor with everything else there, looks wise, and probably some performance wise. Well, also. 550 horsepower out of the V8 now. Yeah, so the three cars that we think are the best. We may not agree, right. all of us, but uh, who wants to start, Travis? Uh, so my favorite at the show was the Macan. Uh, excuse the Porsche me. Macan. Porsche Macan. The macadamia pecan there, yeah. but it's pretty cool. Uh, Nissan Sentra Nismo concept. Okay. Thought that was really cool. And then you can't leave the show without talking about the Uabian Puma. <laughs> oh God. Which that is, Puma. which is like as Jason described it over at Jalopnik, it's a dead whale carcass on top of a truck chassis. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like. It's and amazing. Normally, I would say that's just hyperbole, but this actually looks. No, this exactly is incredible. Like oh yeah. And yeah. those wheels. How big were those wheels? I think the there were thirties. Yeah, no, so what's the story behind that thing? So there's a guy, Dr. Uabian, who I'm we tracked, Dr. Uabian, I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Uh, we tracked him down, I think, we believe he's a plastic surgeon or a cosmetic surgeon mm. in the area, and he built his own truck roadster thing, <laughs> and he won't admit to any of the specifics about it. When you ask him what, we, we asked what engine was in there, and he said it differs based on whatever, but the spec sheet says it's a 505 horsepower, seven liter V8. Oh, so that Which would be a sounds an ls 6 It's an LS, seven? yeah, it sounds like an LS7 oh. in there. Hmm. And the interior is totally bespoke, but it's obviously out of a Volvo C70. The taillights right. are off a Buick Enclave. And he says that it costs $1.1 million, and if you want a test drive, he'll do it for the right price. <laughs> I think the Enclave is my favorite part of that. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> exactly. Oh, what, what drove you to choose the Enclave? Life. Right, did GM yeah. go, well, you know, I got a sale on taillights today, so... Um, hey, if you buy crate motor, if you buy an LS7 <laughs> crate motor, you get, you get a set of Enclave taillights exactly. for free. It's so fantastic. that's what they were doing. All right, so you talked to this guy? I didn't, but I know people that did. <laughs> but he seems to be a shadowy figure. Uh, when I was leaving the show the, the last day of the show, I looked over there, no one was around the car, just this man just sitting angrily in the corner like he was waiting he was trying to scare anyone that came near the car away because he didn't want them to touch it he didn't want them to go in it and apparently you have to have a credit check before you're allowed to drive it all right so um <laughs> but we still don't know the backstory like why he built it I'm, what a, the story he's a cosmetic surgeon apparently this is his aesthetic this is his aesthetic that so, so don't go to that guy <laughs> <laughs> if you want a nose job it's the lesson looks, learned yeah. if you want a nose job that looks like a dead whale <laughs> right 
then this is your guy. enjoy yeah. it. Um, <laughs> all right, so you know what? We'll just throw out the three, and then we'll get back to talking about them. Sir. OK, uh, can I agree? Macon, yes. OK. Same. And you know what? Just to save time, it's one of mine also. Yeah. I was a little worried about it, too, because from the photos that were floating around, you couldn't really tell with the um, proportions whether it would really work in real life. Right. And then when I saw it, I was because definitely it, impressed. It is kind of a pygmy cayenne. But, yeah. But, you know, with that lower center of gravity, it actually, the, the look works. I mean, it's a little smaller. It's sort of like a three-quarters cayenne, but it's a little more squat. Completely. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Right. What's the third? So that one. Um, the second. The second one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I jumped. I, in. I will. I will do Colorado, the new Chevy oh. Colorado. Mm. I really like the look of that truck. And, so uh, and, and back to the back to the midsize truck truck segment for them. And um, what was the third one I said? You the Vision said, GT concept. Oh, oh, that's right. The Vision GT. Well, there. I had. There's so many. I was well, yeah, there, are, about there other are quite a few. Vision GT concept, though, I really like. And also, we got a chance to drive that. So. That's right. So that's the um, yeah. the Volkswagen GTI. Concept. Oh well, there's the there's two different Vision concepts. Right. There's the Vision GT, which is Mercedes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's then the there's the so other which one Vision. Is, you're talking about the I'm Vision talking GTI. about Volkswagen. The Volkswagen. Yeah. One. Yeah. yeah. And, but that Mercedes is also. Right. So the Mercedes one about. is what. It's from, Gran, it's from Gran Turismo. Thank you. So they had a bunch of, uh, they're having a bunch of manufacturers style dream supercars for the game. And Mercedes actually built theirs. It doesn't have a real interior, but it's got a super long hood, really short deck. It's about yay high off the ground. Mm -hmm. That's yay, yay high. Um, it's an exact measurement. It's an exact <laughs> measurement, yeah. Uh, and they're saying to imagine that it has a 577 horsepower V8 in there. So imagine that. It doesn't. But it imagine, really. imagine it does. It's, it's got a LED grill. And you, but you could stuff. drive it in the game, though. You could, yes. Imagine it also has missile launchers. So well, there you just go. Just imagine whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can imagine anything. And and yay is how many millimeter? Uh, it's uh, it's about a decimeter. <laughs> Interesting. Is that? I'm not sure what a decimeter is. Is that metric system, or is that just something totally? No, different? it's it's metric. Yeah. Okay, so those are the three. And the um, the Volkswagen GTI Vision concept is what? Uh, five hundred and three horsepower. Mark 7, basically. Yeah. yeah. And basically it's, basically, it's a Mark 7. Um, Souped up to be a race car. Right. Three liter, turbocharged. Yeah. And it, it, they showed it at uh, the Wuerthersee Tuner Festival in Austria earlier this year. So good. I mean, it's interesting that they showed that. They didn't have a whole lot of other things to show. But that thing was cool. And we actually got to drive it. Yeah. That Super was kind cool. Of, oh, kind of around a autocross course. Yeah, but it was fast. But it was fast. Really fast. <laughs> and, you know, I love the sound. Uh, it, it sounds like a dragon like slumbering when you walk up to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a little grumbly. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. And um, the closest thing that we're going to see to it is that the, that suspension setup is going to be um, close to the next R, whatever the, next, the Mark 7 R is going right. to be. So that's the, basically the setup that it had. So my three? Go ahead. Yeah, what are your three, Mike? What are my three? Thank yes. you very much Love for setting me up. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go straight out Subaru WRX. <laughs> no. Yeah, y'all can suck it because we're going to talk about re <laughs> the reason why in a minute. Um, <laughs> also the Macan, which we, we talked about, because uh, it reminds me of like a hot hatch, like a very expensive mm -hmm. hot hatch. I think it's the Porsches. I think it's, I would rather drive that than a Cayenne. I think that's what, oh, yeah. that's oh, yeah. the, that could be a really fun car to drive. I think it could be um, the next kind of rally Porsche thing. Um, Maybe. Subaru should have built. That's what the, I would think the Tribeca should have been if Subaru really wanted to extend its or rally. sell them <laughs> <laughs> or sell them. Sell them. Yeah. Um, Not discontinued. Um, but also then the smaller version of that, which is the Nissan Juke Nismo RS. It's my third. That was, I, I could have put that also in my top three. I was I, right. I, I love that car. Juke's a good car. Yes. This has more power. The only problem I see is that. They haven't figured out a way to get their all-wheel drive system hooked up to a manual. So if you want the all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. yeah. you got to get the CVT, which it's kind of a pain. Is even though basically Nissan, the Juke has the best-tuned CVT, I think. Yeah. We haven't driven the, the Subarus yet, but if you're going to drive a box of rubber bands, like they have the best one, basically oh. that's what it is. You're driving a box of rubber bands. Yeah. So yeah. WRX. All right, let's start with WRX. <laughs> Why are you so wrong? Well, I'm not wrong at all, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, yes, it, it's not, people are going to bitch about the looks of it. 
because, you know, I'm going to say it's unformed looking. It's all right. It's crap. Let's just face it. It's crap looking. Right. But, but, but the reason why it's crap looking is that, first of all, the wheels don't extend past the fenders. That's a problem, but that's a problem that could be solved. Mm-hmm. I think that is 90%, 80% of the design problems that that car has. If those wheels extended closer to the fe- or actually past the right. fender wells, okay. I think that you would, like, it would look a lot more like the concept that everybody got excited about. So, but really, the WRX to me is about what it's going to drive yeah. like. And so it's more powerful right. than the last one, which is always good. Three more, three more horsepower. Okay, well that's okay. A whopping three whopping more horsepower. Whopping three more three. horsepower, right? Um, okay, thank you for... <laughs> <laughs> 268. 268, it's however, okay. Well, here, all right, th- first you want the good news and the bad news first? Both. Whatever. The bad news is, yes, it's an FA family engine. The uh, WRX has the FA family engine, right? Right. right. The two liter. Mm-hmm. And everybody was hoping that that would fit you know, the turbocharged version from the WRX would fit into the BRZ. No, won't fit. The bottom mounted turbos, it's too, too big, tall. too yeah. tall. So it's not going to happen. Oh, well. Um, that's, which means that you kind of have to buy the WRX. The thing about the WRX, to me at least, is that it's always been a rude car. Right? Like the WRX is, it's like, it's like an FU to all the other Econo boxes out there. It's got fender right. flares, it's got a tacked on hood scoop, it's got huge fog lights, the interior, it's got good seats. It always, WRX has always had yeah. good seats yeah. and that's a good true. steering wheel, and that's it. The interior's been crap forever. Now when they're in the press conference, they're talking about refinement, about how much better the interior is, about how everything's integrated. It's not the same sort of, it's like they're trying to take it to an area where it's not that sort of car. And I, I bet it drives fantastically. Well, but it's probably a great driving car. Okay. And that's what's more important to me as well. But based on just looking at the car, I don't think it's nearly aggressive enough. So when the STI comes, which it will, right. hopefully it has a giant hood scoop and a big wing and huge fog lights All and right, they, they crapify the interior. I'll give you that. Oh, by the way, did you know that the, uh, the WRX and the STI are going to have the same bolt pattern so you can finally swap Wheels, right, exactly. It's about time. It's about time. No, I'm serious. You go to, you go to uh, Nasioc, and uh, that's all <laughs> that's they're all talking they talk? about. Oh, no, that's not all Dominates the conversation. <laughs> well, you really want to swap my wheels, and I can't. Have you ever been on their Bolt Pattern Forum? It's sponsored, <laughs> by, ti- <laughs> it's sponsored by Tire Rack. Is it really? Yeah, I probably. <laughs> you know what I did like on the Subaru stand, though? I did like that, uh, that legacy concept. The hey. legacy concept is really nice. You know what the legacy concept foreshadows? Exactly what the legacy won't look like. <laughs> right. Um, but can't we like the concept? See, the problem is the legacy is going to look like that, but then the wheels are going to be like three inches inside, like a like a uh, an Etzel. WRX concept is to WRX as legacy concept is to legacy. Probably. But the thing with the WRX really is, is it's going to drive better than the last version, right? So that to me is the mark of a successful launch, right? Right. It'll be better than the last one. Torque vectoring also we didn't mention, but that's, right. that'll mm-hmm. be part of it. Um, but if you can get past the looks, which the ungainly, perhaps, looks, and um, you don't mind that some people are going to be driving them with CVTs. Mm-hmm. You're really being nice to one of your favorites. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's, is that the point? There you go. All right. So that's, that's all I'm going to say about the WRX. So is it true, then, that the worse a WRX looks, the better it drives? <laughs> well, you know, some people thought the egg eye, egg drop, whatever, the egg drop soup bug eye, eye <laughs> the bug, bug eye, eye yeah. and the, uh, the Hawkeye, well, the Hawkeye was always good looking, but a lot of people didn't like those looks. No, I know. When they came right. out. I mean, you know, really, ultimately, if you, seriously, look at that car and then picture it with the wheels pushed out. It's a different car. I don't think it's necessarily ugly by any means. Like, I just don't find it exciting, which... I guess everybody was hoping for after seeing well, the, the concept. The concept was very misleading. Uh, yeah, it is weird. So the front looks more more aggressive than the back does now. Um, it, there's some BMW, BMW 3 Series in the back, and it's you know it's whatever. There's Legacy car. GT in the front. It looks. It's just. I think it's the worst you could say about it is an unformed design. I don't think it's ugly, ugly. No, it's just lazy and boring. Okay, thank you, Travis. You're welcome. Anyway, we haven't talked I'll about never, I'll never be driving one, apparently. <laughs> so your other picks, we didn't talk about. So the Sentra Nismo, 1.8 liter four the cylinder. Sentra version. Yes, the concept. But it has 240 horsepower, 240 pound-feet of torque. 
it's still front wheel drive, mm -hmm. but it's got a six speed manual, you know, 19 inch wheels, 225s on there, I think, new yeah. suspension. Mm -hmm. It looked really cool at the show. Uh, I expect that they'll actually build something like it, probably with smaller wheels, and it'll be like the WRX concept. It'll be, we'll <laughs> see it, we'll see, oh, that's really cool, it's gonna be fantastic, and they'll bring the Nismo Sentra out, and it'll have like 17s that'll be pushed in, <laughs> and it'll torque steer like mad, and it'll just but, be. All right, so, <laughs> but I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna give you, uh, I think, yeah, it's an okay car. I think, yeah, that'll okay. be fun. Well, I think the thing, the problem is that, is it the spiritual successor to the old SER? Because that's the that's what people are gonna be, expecting it to be and the and the you know that what second gen or whatever it was the the, the 90s ser ser was great but i feel like they don't have to worry about that as much because they're going to call it the nismo now which right. is a different i guess philosophy behind the tuning there's no v-spec yeah. anymore there's no so i'm being SCR. nostalgic i'm being needless i think nostalgic. i think maybe just because it's a hot enough center i think people are going to automatically make the ser comparison are you saying i'm just regular people or or, un, or irregular people, <laughs> such right, as right. yourself. <laughs> <Get any. laughs> so I, I think that Nismo is going to stand for something different. Like when you see with the GTR Nismo, it doesn't stand for, it does have less weight, but it's also got tons more pa more power and more focus on aerodynamics than, you know, a V-Spec sort of car okay. had in the past. So I think that it's a different, I think it's a different philosophy behind them. What do you think of that car? The Sentra or the GTR? Uh, I was gonna say Sentra, but then let's talk about the GTR. Well, that's, I really like. I really like. I really like. Or should the we Sentra. just screw the Sentra? But no, no, because I did. I did. I stopped okay. when I saw the Sentra, and I was I was surprised because I didn't get to go to that reveal. So when I went to walk around the stand, I mean, I, I really liked all three of the Nismo cars that they had there. But um, no, I was just gonna bring up the fact that like, did you see that? Did you see that that the Nurburgring track time that yeah. they put up with the GTR, that 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 like has a different kit on it. Mm -hmm. That's not actually part of the kit that comes with that arrow? car. Arrow yeah, wise. yeah, the whole arrow kit and all that. It's a different yeah. arrow kit. It was like yeah, so you couldn't take, take that car that was on the stage and go and go out there. No, it was like a that. Nurburgring only car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's not good. And here's the thing. <laughs> well, I mean, because 708, I mean, holy crap. Right. Th that's that's it's right a, in between the Gumpert Apollo. Yeah. And the Porsche 918. It's 11 seconds slower than the 918, which sounds like a lot, but the price is going to be yeah. like less than a fifth. Right, a fifth. Might be a sixth. I don't know. It's going to be six. It's going to be. They said that the Nismo What's is going to be a little less than two hundred thousand dollars. Right. The 918 is a million dollars. Right. I can't believe. By the way, I can't believe that the Nismo GTR is going to be even that much. Well, that's. This is why I don't like the Nismo GTR. Okay. Because okay, out of the factory, 600 horsepower. For an extra what eighty thousand dollars over the price, it's let's a say. Lot. Let's say, you can take a stock GTR over to somewhere, you know, some guy, just some one of those random tuners. Yeah, random. That they're around. Sure. Like go to Ivy Tune or something and say, I want, I want fourteen hundred horsepower, please. I'm like coming right up, and they'll give you like seven thousand dollars later. You have a fourteen hundred. They have that kind of service. Coming right up, <laughs> sir. And all they do is they go, they, they fart something into the engine, right. and then it's got fourteen hundred horsepower, and you pull it out, then like two, three days later, and you're going, you're running the sixty, and on one and eight, one point eight seconds, you're doing six thousand miles an hour down the drag strip. But it doesn't have those carbon fiber shark's teeth. On the rear, it doesn't have. It does, also doesn't have a very artful little red stripe. Artful, artful. Yeah, yeah. It just it's doesn't have canards. Won't have canards. Well, it's like the in-house Nissan tuner. If they can get fourteen hundred horsepower out of a Nissan from a non-in-house place, right? You think the in-house people are going to be getting six thousand horsepower? It could be like that stupid <laughs> Middle Eastern supercar that could always have five thousand horsepower. The GTR <laughs> could be that car, but it's not because Nissan okay. just wants to turn I, I guess you're right. I mean, actually, the da most damning thing is that the car you buy. At the dealership, can't do the Nurburgring in seven eight, right? Because right. that's the bragging rights. If you can't do that, if you're pulling a car out of, I mean, granted, I'm sure it'll be pretty damn fast, but not like supercar, Gumpert Apollo fast. I don't, <laughs> by the way, I wish it wasn't butt up against the the Gumpert Apollo because it's like, oh, it's faster than a Gumpert <laughs> Apollo. It's like, oh god, that thing is disgusting. But I mean, that thing was fast. I think it's, it's actually it's one of really the, cool. It's one yeah. of the fastest cars around the Top Gear track, anyway. The Gumpert Apollo. Where was that at the auto show? Was that? I know. Uh, Gumpert, well, they're gone. The they, Gumpert stand. The Gumpert stand was pretty sad. It was in the aftermarket <laughs> hall. I don't know if you went down there. I, saw, I thought. No. I, I think I saw it at SEMA actually. Right. But so, you would hope that. I mean, it's probably faster than cars that are sexier than that. But like, it sucks that it's right there at the Gumpert Apollo. Anyway. Especially when it's the 918 on the other side, because. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty. That that thing in real life is. 
It's nice. That's a, it is. So wait it's a minute. Nice. We should talk. Nice. That's a good word for it. Let's nice. talk a little bit about you, that. You said it too. I, I know I said it first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Damn it. Gentlemen. Sorry. <laughs> hey, what's up? Gumpert, uh, Gumpert Apollo. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm <laughs> the Gumpert Apollo. Porsche, Porsche, Porsche 918. There was some news about that, right? It's fast. Faster. Er. Faster than we thought it was going yeah. to be. Yeah. Quicker. Both. Right? 2.5 seconds to 60? Yeah, that's pretty quick. Not okay. as, but not as quick as a Nismo GTR. By the way, Nismo GTR, they're saying two seconds, but the two seconds is two point something. But, but that seems Dude, impossible. if it can do 2.3 or 4, I mean, especially on run flats. Yeah, it's pretty good. Right, granted, they're not your average run flats, but they're, you know. They're made of glue. Made of glue. Yeah. The tire's made of glue. Anyway, what's your third? Uh, have we gone through all your cars? I had the Macan. Which right. I liked because it looked like the Sport Turismo concept as well from Paris last year. That's true. That's the it's car that looks the that. most like the Sport Turismo concept. Right. Yes. Which is the best looking thing Porsche has done in a really long time. Actually, and the other, the other nice thing about the Macan was that like uh, we got in it, mm -hmm. and he sat in the driver's seat, full you know, full driving position. I got in the back, and there was still plenty of room. Which wow. you're not so quite you sure sitting behind of. Shaquille O'Neal over here. You know that you know that you. Uh, it's a car. We actually hang out on. all the time together. <laughs> we we get in all the cars at all. No, yeah. um, but uh, yeah, Tied which team. I wasn't quite sure whether it would have that much room back there. So it's also you know spacious. It's good for a family. Yeah, yeah. and by the way, it's the, cheap too. <laughs> it's Bro, so, so cheap. How about that forty-nine nine jump to seventy-two three? <laughs> That's a lot. That's a big jump. Well, but there's gonna <laughs> but be there's gonna be a Macan GTS in between there. Right, We're going yeah, to get yeah. a Macan diesel. There'll be a Macan Turbo S. Right. There'll be a regular Macan. There'll be a Macan Executive probably right. that's extended and larger, but not but bigger than a Cayenne. But it's not a Cayenne, so it's a Macan. And okay. you can option all of them. Yeah. Yes. Well, there you go. So you could build the hundred and fifty thousand dollar Macan. I think I've built like a hundred and ten thousand. Well, there you go. <laughs> so far. And you can do that. That's up right now. The yeah. configurator is online at Porsche. Um, here's the thing. So the problem with the Macan, the, the only thing I'm going to say is that if you're a purist, by the way, you need to have gotten over it by now. I would Because hope so. these volume cars are paying for your GT2 and GT3 and GT3 RS. And your LMP1 stuff. program and all that and stuff. All your, and your LMP1 yeah, All the program. good stuff. So that's fine. So let's just put that aside for a second. The only problem I see with this is that, yeah, the turbo is going to be great. But you've got to be okay with the fact that, like, 16-year-old girls from Beverly Hills are going to be driving as their first car, the base model. So are you okay with that? It's fine by me. It's fine by you. It's the same thing me. Mercedes is doing to CLA. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, whatever. By the way, did you also see the optional tire on the turbo? Yes. Do you see how, how much tire that is? There are 295s all the way around. 295, 35, 21s, <laughs> all around. All around. That's known as a buttload of tire. <laughs> that's a lot of tire. Yeah, that's the most tire. It's all the tire. So Chevy Colorado is your third pick. Yeah. Uh, I just really like the styling. Okay. It's fast. It, it's very fast. Very fast. Right well, it's got that uh, V4 and the V6. And the Nürburgring V4? V4. It's got a V4. It's, a it's, it's got, got the Lancia Fulvia <laughs> engine there. Saab or a Lancia. Nice. <laughs> Meant um, to go 4 and V6, but you know, what are you going to do? So Nürburgring lap time, what, like 7 seconds? At least. Okay. I think it's a 712, but you can't buy that. St that oh, you one can't get that either. spec. No. Yeah. No, you That's can't. a callback. That's what we call that. All right, you were saying. Anyway, no, I just, I just like the, uh, I like the styling. I like the, uh, they got that special compartment manage or the cargo management system in the back, <laughs> for folks with active lifestyles. <laughs> I'd like to imagine one day I will be that guy active in Colorado lifestyle. driving my Colorado with my bike in the back. Your yeah. bike, your hand glider. Exactly. Your you jet know, ski. The dogs in the front seat yeah. with me. Why not? You know, yeah. I can do that. All right. No, I mean it's nice and it's sort of. There isn't that much in the mid-sized truck market right now anyway. So it's nice what, to see them back Frontier, there. Tacoma? Yep. Frontier, Tacoma. That's about it, right? That's it. No more Ranger. Right. So there you go. Hey, Mike, if you were to choose one car from the show, <laughs> which car would that be? Excellent segue. So for me, um, the one car for me is the, uh, well, the Jag F-Type. So, it's Wait, it's so we can't talk question. about it, but you get to, add, you get get to, to pick it. No, I get it. It's, it's host prerogative. Okay. You can, what, what, go ahead. What you, what well, I was going to say the Jag F type. All right, all right. That's, <laughs> but, no. No, no, no. You can no, stick no, it. No, no, no. I'll go with the Macan Turbo. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's nice. It is nice. No, it's, it's, a, it's really going to be fantastic, yes. I think. I concur. Yes. Oh, man. Colorado? I want, I want both of those, though. 
You could pick either. Uh, no, I'll take the uh, Mirage, the Mitsubishi Mirage. Ooh, the Mirage. No, I'll take the Lincoln MKC. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Link, you know, somewhere someone from Lincoln went. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Oh. No, they got the I internet don't. at Lincoln. <laughs> oh <laughs> my! <laughs> See. Oh. Uh, I'd probably go with the uh, with the Macan as well. If you are taking the well, I'm taking the F type. I took the and I took the Macan. the Macan. You need a third. We need a third. This is supposed to be three cars from the show. Okay, fine. Um, I will do the. Well, then I'll do the WRX. Forgive me, <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't even like it before. <laughs> well, yeah, but it would be fun to drive. All right, so WRX. There you go. <laughs> Macan and F-Type, the three cars that you want from the Los Angeles Auto Show. And that's after Drive for Today. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much for showing up. After Drive Live. Live After Drive with uh, Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Bizarro Matt Farah. Once um, again. Thank, thanks again for showing up. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to one and all. We recorded this live on Thanksgiving. We actually did. Thanks, everyone. See you next week on Afterdrive. So the oh my, before you get started, real quick, I want to tell you, dude. Did you know you can't get the Nuke Gizmo RS manual with all-wheel drive? Just front-wheel drive is no! manual. Isn't that ridiculous? Did you say Nuke Gizmo? What'd you hear? I heard Nuke Gizmo. I didn't say that.